Hey, are you looking to upgrade your key life areas and evolve to a higher level of existence? To practically harness personal growth and spirituality in a crazy, busy, imperfect world? Then you've come to the right place. My name is Prash and this is Urban Spirituality, the show which uniquely fuses ancient wisdom with contemporary self-growth and spiritual disciplines to deliver value-added tools, traits, and insights to help you unleash your fullest potential. We always keep it real, featuring authentic, unfiltered dialogue with guests from diverse backgrounds to inspire, entertain, and enlighten all who listen. So get ready for your dose of urban spirituality. Be present and let's dive in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Urban Spirituality with your host, Prash K. And I have somebody who is far away from where we are, but her smile, as you can tell, makes her feel close at home. I stumbled upon her through a mutual friend, Brian Rose of London Real Academy. And I was intrigued by her powerful grasp of the field of knowledge or the discipline of yoga. But what really got me is her unique take on what yoga really is about, the bigger picture of yoga and what yoga can do for us, all of us, whether we're practitioners or not, and what it can bring to our lives. And so it was only a matter of time that I had to track her down even though she's far away, and bring her to the show, mm-hmm. I am so delighted to welcome the very unique Sonia Dubell. Sonia, take a bow. <laughs> Prash, thank you very much for that lovely introduction. I'm so, I'm so I delighted to have you. I, I want to say, spirituality. oh, it's a pleasure to have you, Sonia. And I want to tell the world a little bit about you. Sonia, you are the founder of the moving energy yoga movement. You weave and blend dynamic movements, stretches, and bring your 16-year veteran experience of yoga to people across the world. You're passionate about demystifying yoga in a way that is unique, fresh, and authentically you. And on top of that, you're a life coach, you're an international speaker, and you're a certified hypnobirthing teacher I'm so delighted that you're with us here to help share the mind, body, freedom, and life fulfillment. So thank you, Sonia, for joining us. Oh, thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. You're welcome. So Sonia, you are juggling between London and the US. What's been going on that's making you travel so much? Well, um, actually, we relocated to the US. So we moved to Florida. Um, and it was a family decision um, and we're loving it so far. We actually, there was a choice. We, we wanted as a family to offer our little one more of the life that I had growing up in South Africa where, mm. you know, shoes are 90% of the time optional. <laughs> you know, there's sun. Right. There's, and so we made the choice. It was either Florida or Cape Town and it ended up being Florida. So here we are. And, and loving it. Awesome. Yeah. I've been out to Florida. It's a beautiful place. I think uh, and a couple of my coaching buddies, they hang out there as well. It's a great place to be. Um, and from what I understand, by all accounts, yoga is just as thriving in the East Coast as it is right here in the heart of London. Is that true? Yes, it definitely is. I mean, I think right now yoga has taken on a, a different frame. You know, back when I started 16 years ago, yoga was very different um, to what it is now. You know, when I went to my first teacher trainings and retreats, I I felt like I was the only one, Mm. because I pretty much was, the only (laughs) one who had painted nails, you know? Everybody else felt like the whole, I don't shave my legs, everything is kept for the compost heap and you know I occasionally brush my hair but it's mostly dreading out and you know and that was the vibe and 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 I I felt at that time like I was just trying to figure out who I was why this journey was so right for me but I felt so different you know Mm. I came from an acting background so I was an actress and a model and I started modeling when I was 14 and and yet 
there was such a strong pull towards this practice and it was beyond the poses even back then it was for me it was everything that it promised this promise of like being able to be so peaceful with yourself as a person so you know not needing to uh mold and, and chameleon yourself in different scenarios to fit in but rather to be so contented and joyful with who you were as a person and this was the pull for me I wanted that because I didn't have that and it slowly you know in the beginning I still it's still you know I still didn't connect the dots I was like hey how is this trick and asana and this flow gonna do this for me because you know it's not doing it but you have to be patient. You know, when, when people start yoga in the beginning, you're working from the outside in. You start with what we feel as the grossest form of our connection. We can all feel our physical body. So you start and then you start to get more and more in tune and connecting with the more subtle energies. And that's, that's really the journey until you are, you know, in it. And I, I don't think it ever ends. I think it will, and that's the joy, you know, it, it's a journey of a lifetime and every day, a new awakening, every day, a new connection. Um, and that's why it's so beautiful. And my passion is to share that. And I, I don't, I don't believe that you need to be, uh, you know, in a yoga studio to, to have this experience. I believe that it should be available to everybody. And I know now, you know, with the people that I teach, very often they can't get to a studio. They right. new mom and they can barely sleep or leave baby or they work all the hours God sends. And when they arrive home, it's they're exhausted. It's like, I'm not going to get dressed, and you know, no. some semblance of okay spandex and hit a yoga studio. It's no. just not going to happen. But they should not allow that circumstance to prevent them from practice right. and for me it's such a beautiful thing to invite into your life it's like giving your body a clean from the inside like you would brush your teeth you know if you okay. learn a practice it will be yours for life and you will never have to rely on anybody you will literally have that gem and it's like medicine right yoga's medicine it's people say to me, you know, I've got a headache and I'm like, okay, you just do some yoga. You know, I've got a stomachache. Brilliant. Okay. Just do some yoga. For me, yoga is like for everything. You it's know, that tonality. It, it answers so many things, right? It's so much, so much. So I want to, I, I want to pick up on that in a second, actually, um, because I think there is a lot of misconception about what yoga is and isn't this. Um, there's the whole taboo thing where people of different faiths or let's say the organized religious leaders make yoga out to be the work of the devil or something. And there's a lot of bad press that yoga is being gotten and misunderstandings. But before I go down there, um, you, and you've touched on this a little bit, what I want to ask you is what drove you to get into yoga in the first place? I mean, you were an accomplished actress, you're a model. What compelled you to embrace yoga so i mean taking taking it all the way back you know we all we all have stuff and for me i definitely had a load of stuff my parents got divorced when i was you know five they sent us to boarding school when i was six um you know i had a lot of stuff growing up that wasn't you know that lovely childhood and i think it sat with me when I was 14 and I started modeling and I, you know, I had carried with me a lot of stuff and I continued to do that until I was at a place in my life that was everything to do with appearance and everything to do with external right. and nothing to do with the inner life at all. I mean, nobody cared whether you were crying inside as long as, you know, you look good and you could strike a pose. You know, that was, that was it. Can you, can you deliver your line? 
I don't care what's going on inside of you unless it helps me you, for you to deliver your line better. You know, it's like nothing really. And for me, the search was so, it was, I, I, I think I needed it so much. I just needed to, I needed to feel what it felt like when people really felt joy because I didn't know what that felt like. I, I knew intellectually that I should appreciate sitting on a beach early in the morning and watching the sun come up over the silvery ocean, but I, I didn't feel it. And it was so hard. There was not enough doing, not enough being. Like, I guess you felt, um, do you mean that you, you, know, you weren't able to be present, to be in that moment and really relish it, which obviously is a very yeah. Eastern thing, right? To, yeah. you know, in the West, we're very much about the doing. Get, um, as I was just, the other day, I was just saying that we're all about the, oh, we've got to become happy in the West. We're taught, chase something, do something, and then you'll be happy. Whereas yeah. in the East, we're like, be happy now with what you got and happiness yeah. will just continue to come to you. Right. Yes. Yes. The, is that, is that. It, yes. And, and it was about, it was about feeling. It was about feeling. I, I think a long time, you know, when I was younger and in boarding school, I think I stopped feeling because feeling mm. hurt too much. And I'd gone through so many things growing up and so many painful events in my life that I decided to stop actually feeling because that was a better solution to surviving. Gosh. And so, you know, I just stopped feeling. I, it was almost like I took my little heart and I put it in a little box and I just closed it up and it wasn't going to experience anything. And then there was that feeling of like, I, I want what what I see others that feeling of being able to look at that sunrise and go oh my god isn't that beautiful and yeah. I want to feel the real truth of that not just the intellectual response you know for example you you, you know if you know, if somebody is, if you're in a crowd of people and somebody tells a joke and then intellectually, you know, it's funny. And then you're like, oh, okay. And then you cut to that fake laugh, but you don't really feel the joy in it. And you're like, ugh, I just want to leave. This is not really working for me. And that's the feeling that I would have. I would be at like gatherings and events. I would just be like, so not connected in the moment. And it's really ineffable trying to explain why you are drawn to unravel what lies beneath, but that is what happened. And when I found yoga, I still didn't think it was the answer. I hoped with all my heart it was, mm -hmm. I wanted it to be, but when you get onto your yoga mat and you're kind of, you know, learning the shapes <laughs> of all these poses, Very it wasn't, it hadn't started to work yet for me. And then as time went by, I slowly started to feel the shift. And I really remember it. You know, I was, I was living in Chelsea and I walked out a, a road that I had been, I'd been living there for two years. Mm. And I walked and I saw a tree on the edge of the, the road. And I was like, oh my God, that's beautiful. Did they just plant new trees here? <laughs> honestly that tree had been there the whole time it it and just it's almost, yes it's, well, it's almost like your 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 lenses change yeah and you start to see life differently because you release so much of that stuff that you hold in your body physically our emotions our stuff our thoughts our worries all the stuff we carry it has a physical reflection and mm -hmm. that touch that grip on us physically gives us a different perception of our reality right. and the moment you start to unlock it and stretch it and melt it and open and free yourself your perception changes and you start to see colors brighter you start to see the world you start to take situations a little less seriously things become a little lighter and that's just the beginning of the journey you a big part of yoga for me has is is about me it's not about anybody else it's about the the gift that it gives you as a practitioner that you are able to be in control of your well your wellness 
your mental wellness, your physical wellness, because a practice is both this integration of your mind, your body, and your spirit reuniting. You're coming together. And what does that actually mean? It means that you are unlocking everything that you are, your joy, your essence, your everything. Because when you disconnect from everything you're taught, your socialization, you come home to what it feels to just exist in joy, to joy. Get, let your fingers get all pruny as you percolate in it. Right. right? I love that. I love that. I, I love that. And, and, and that, that's why I'm drawn to people's stories, um, especially here in urban spirituality. We love to make that spiritual aspects of our lives accessible for people to make it tangible for people to appreciate and whilst not all aspects of spirituality can come within the grasp of our material senses a lot of it is esoteric and a lot of it is as you say you've got to feel it you've got to experience it um, it fascinates me how people come i know a lot of people come to yoga for the physical health benefits, mm -hmm. right? Uh, or the calmness of mind that comes with a hatha or an ashtanga or a physical yoga practice. But yes. Sonia, you've been at this for nearly two decades, right? Let's yes. help me help, help our audience out. Yoga is surely so much more than just the physical postures that we see in the gym and a little bit of, you know, flexibility and inner core strength. Uh, 100%. Can you elaborate for us yes, i mean look it doesn't matter how you come come for whatever reason you come because yoga will do its work it will work on you so if you Prash, i've lost your audio sorry so yes it will work come for right. whatever you come it is going to do its magic on you so mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what draws you. You may, you know, people come to yoga because they have fat like chronic fatigue and they need to stir the inner energy. They come to yoga because the mind can't stop chatting yeah, and it's just going crazy. And they need to just find a way to still that. There's depression, insomnia, and yoga heals it. It takes you from depression to joy, from sleeplessness to deep sleep. To nice. it heals, right? So it doesn't matter what brings you, and it. It's your intention. It's like, well, at some point, yoga is going to have an effect on you and you're going to realize and uncover and unravel things about you that you want to. It's, it's, right. It gives you what you want from it, right? So for if you come to yoga thinking, I have all my life um, you know, worked as an accountant, I feel so stuck, I feel so creatively blocked. And you come to a yoga practice and in the beginning, you just start to melt the tension, let go of the contraction. You will feel the floodgates of creativity open for you. You mm -hmm. might even change your whole life. You might even go, I'm done with accounting and I'm going to go and sculpt on, you know, some mountain. You know, yeah. it changes people. It's a little bit like, ayahuasca i mean it's you know when i went on that ayahuasca journey yeah it flipped so many switches for me but i'll tell yeah. you yoga does the same thing it's longer it's not overnight right ayahuasca tends to have a much more instant effect and i know we all live in this i want it now vibe but yoga is incredible for one helping you release that stuff that you've carried with you from even unconsciously from childhood, whatever happened in your home, whatever stuff you lugged around, the things that, you know, you needed that weren't filled, uh, the, you know, whatever, bullying, whatever, mm -hmm. it helps you to wrap it all up and let go of it. Let it go, right? Then it helps you to bring your body back into alignment, into to alignment. Feel, your, feel yourself. Okay, because feeling is a very big part that we in our culture have let go, yeah, have neglected. Like blocked yeah. out almost, like yeah. forget about the feeling. We, we need to feel, feel into our physical house. This is the house that we were given for our spirit to come in and experience this beautiful life. Amazing. And we need to clean our lenses through cleaning the inside of our bodies.
right? So we come to yoga understanding I am going to rinse out the stuff I don't need until I feel so light and bright. And as my body moves into light and bright, so my mind begins to calm, begins to still. And then I get that blue sky thinking where I have more freedom in my mind. I am no longer blinkered. Mm -hmm. I realize that this world is mine. I get to choose my life. I get to manifest the things I want to manifest. And so we have that power, but we don't see it and we don't use it until we connect to it. So I want, I love that because you're speaking to a power that lies dormant within all of us. It is out there within the fabric of the universe and just like when we tune in to a radio station or tune in to watch TV on a certain channel, <clears throat> the channel, the channels of inspiration, the channels of intuition, the channels of healing and emotional repair, all of these are channels that are accessible through the gradual unfoldment and embracement of the disciplines within yoga, right? Which is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Let me ask you this. There are people listening here who might be feeling, ah, an hour yoga is not for me. Or, well, I'm kind of not into just kind of stretching and doing this stuff. Are there, through your journey, other aspects of yoga that you've embraced? Because, of course, you know, the Patanjali system talks about other forms of yoga, chanting, pranayama, so many other aspects. Are there other habits or practices that can be taken advantage of for people who perhaps aren't inclined to spend 30 or 40 or 50 minutes so you know look yoga as a physical practice is the same as going it's a ritual right and it's a ritual that you have to want to do you Mm -hmm. decide and you do it you Mm -hmm. don't you know find time for yoga you make time right? That is priority. You make your time. Now, if you think it's important enough and you, and you want to move along a path that is spiritual, you choose it. No one can make you do it. No one can add, no one can coerce you. It comes from inside and maybe Mm -hmm. this life, it's not for you. And that's fine. And that's fine. Yeah. And if it is for you, and if this is something that is pulling you in, or it's like, Ooh, I'm so curious. I wonder if, you know, some, I would shift some of the stuff that I feel inside of me as blocks. That is the only way. And then you add to this process. It's not just a yoga mat and a few shapes you add to it. If you want to have a spiritual life you make a spiritual life so you go part of it is doing the yoga but in my seven step program the first two steps are not yoga the first step is i i want you to clean your house right Mm -hmm. you've got to tidy up your environment so the first step in the seven step process is actually cleaning your personal space primary space and that is your bedroom your bathroom and your wardrobe you go in and you check what is the clutter that i'm holding on to that needs to be let go Mm -hmm. and you go in and you tidy and you Mm -hmm. go into your bathroom and you clean out those cabinets and all that stuff that is just sitting congesting you underneath your bathroom cabinets and around your shower and bath you clean. You go into your bedroom and you clean. You make sure that your sheets are so crispy and beautiful and clean. And you go into, is there stuff under your bed? Is there stuff that is hanging around that is really affecting your environment? So let me tell you that your environment, the epigenetics of it is so powerful that if you decide to go, I'm going to start yoga. Like, let's just say you're sitting on the sofa, you're feeling a little lethargic. Maybe it's Tuesday night and you had a rough weekend. You're sort of getting over it, but Hey, you're feeling older than your age. Yeah. Yeah. And you think, what is this yoga stuff all about? You know, I'm going to give it a try right? So you go onto Amazon and you choose a yoga mat, but you don't choose the most expensive one because you're like, 
oh, you know what, this, this ship may not sail. Like, let me just get that one. So you choose a mat and it's got a couple of those weird blocks and belts and, you know, it arrives on Friday, but it's, you know, it's your night out. So you're not trying it. Anyway, come to Sunday, you go scrolling through YouTube and you find a couple of videos and you do the yoga and you don't feel completely, you know, great about what you just did. Your house is a mess. You've got newspapers from last weekend lying around. It's a, the kitchen's a tip. The dishes haven't been done. And you're trying to invite a practice that is cleansing, that is renewing, that is transformational into your life. I promise you, my friend, you not being able to stick to that habit is, is perfectly in alignment because it's never going to happen. Okay. Right. In order for you to bring yoga into your life, you've got to decide that it really is something that you want. And maybe, maybe it's not, maybe you are unsure, but you do know that transformation yes. is what you want. What you want Healing right. is what you need. Um, to wake up and feel life and, and, and youthful and alive again is what you want. Then you go, okay, okay, I'm going to try this yoga. But before I do, so that I don't end up like millions of people, ordering that Amazon yoga mat, trying it one time and then rolling it up, feeling like it's the only part of you that feels like a yogi because you can roll it up and you pop it in the shoe closet and it never sees the light of day again. Right? Many of so to avoid that, you do, this is the seven step program. You prepare, right? Okay. And I love Abraham Lincoln when he said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and yeah. I'll spend the first four sharpening my axe. Love that. And yeah. that's just so me like all over it because yeah. I think preparation is key, right? You yeah. prepare, you prepare the soil for the seed and then you're going to make it stick. Then you're gonna make it stick. I love that. I, I totally love that. And you touched on this, the home program. Is yeah. there, I mean, from your experiences, have you found there to be, any obstacles that could or should even prevent mm -hmm. someone from embracing this practice of yoga. If they have a willingness, if they have an appetite, they may not be physically adept, but if the willingness and the appetite is there, should there be any restrictions, even just in terms of, like you say, clearly it mm -hmm. should be doable at home. Are there any other restrictions that should apply or people should be able to start to embrace that practice with ease? Look, Wherever you are physically, there is something for you, okay? Mm. Because yoga is not just a physical practice. Yoga is doing what you can, bringing your mind into the moment and using that moving, moving practice as a moving meditation. The questions, the curiosity, some people have never asked, what does it feel like to be in your body? What does mm. it feel like today? What does it feel like? What does your spine feel like? Does it feel alive? What do you feel? You want to connect with all those questions. Now, it doesn't matter if you're doing your yoga in a chair because you can't get down on the floor. It's fine. There is something for you. But then you take that time every day and you do your yoga. You bring your mind into your body. You keep your body into your mind. You, you, the whole lot just comes together. And you begin, a big part of it is self-talk and you begin to have a conversation with yourself okay don't do it when you're in Sainsbury's or Publix you know um but you talk to yourself and you're like becoming this a friend to yourself again so if your back is sore you literally have that conversation like hey what happened did we do something together at gym um you know did like what's what's going on did I sleep badly last night yeah. you're Closing your eyes, and I know this sounds cuckoo to some people, but you talk to your body. It is yours, right? You, if you have a stomach ache, lie down and be like, was it something we ate? What's going on? Um, so you just become this, you just become so connected, so mm -hmm. connected to your body, to your physicality. You are one, right? So you have those beautiful conversations with your body. And you, those things you can do no matter what your physicality or what you can do. And that is yoga. 
connecting mind and body. You are coming together. You're yoking everything together. And you re yes. you're remembering because kids do it naturally. You're remembering what, is, what does it feel like to, to be in my house and to know that this is my house and to be one with my house. It's not my head moving my body around and then I just put on a nice suit or a nice dress and, and I don't really connect to this. You're in it. It's yeah. yours, right? You make that connection. And I think that, I mean, you know, this, the word yoga comes from yog, which, and yog does mean to yoke, to unite. It's just, it, that's yes. the Sanskrit for it. And obviously as, as practitioners of yoga um, and as a fellow um, practitioner um, in my own way, my own small way, um, yoga is still very much about not just the physical work that we do, but it is feeling and reconnecting with our true self and then connecting with the Supreme to connect with the divine, to connect with the higher, to unite, to yoga, to connect between the spirit and the Supreme spiritual whole. And so therefore one thing I'm fascinated to know is through these 16 plus years, yeah. And you've had, I mean, you've had a tough childhood, right? You've had to overcome your inner critic, trusting yourself, the pressures um, in the modeling world that you're in, the acting world. What key lessons would you say, life lessons, has yoga taught you um, over these years that you've had along the journey? I think one of the biggest things is that we're pretty much all the same, you know, um, we think we're so different because we grow up. Well, I grew up insulated. I had no, I had nobody else to tell me, Hey, lots of people go through this. You're totally normal. You know, it's okay. We want solidarity. We want, you know, that feeling of like somebody saying I, me too. Hey, don't worry. It's not just you. So we grow up feeling right. alone and isolated and, and, and almost because of that, you think, you're, there's something wrong with you. And right. so you, so you hide it and you try to put on lots of icing sugar because you don't want to be wrong. You, you, you want to be okay. Right. That's what it taught me. We're all the same. We're all okay. We all have feelings, sadness, depressions, moments of like angst. We all have it <laughs> and it's so okay. And so now when I hear, you know, young, some of my younger students saying things like, but I'm going on meds because I'm depressed. I'm like, oh, baby, no, no, because, you know, it's okay to feel down. Just learn how to feel down. It's okay to be nervous and get butterflies and it's not chronic anxiety. Just, just, just know that it's your way of being a little bit apprehensive, but kind of excited and, and learn. It's okay. These feelings are good. We want the rainbow. We want the kaleidoscope of experience. We don't want to live in a little gray bubble where we don't feel joy, but we don't feel pain and we just plod along. We don't want that. And it's nobody, nobody tells you, Hey, by the way, you know, when you're dark and you're feeling a bit gloomy and that, yeah, just go and have a nice little cozy bath and schnickle up and, and read a book and it'll pass. It's a, it's, it's a vibration. It's an energy. Wow. So powerful right there. It's an energy. And, and, and for people to get from this interview, from this conversation right here, that we are all energy, our thoughts and our vibrations and the frequency that ensues is what our life is all about, right? Nikolai Tesla, famous scientist said, if you want to know the secrets of the universe, think in, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Yeah. The Vedas, the Upanishads, the ancient classics, looking back at the Taoist literature from ancient China, a lot of similarities come up. The Talmud, they all talk about this importance of recognizing the frequency that we operate, the energy that we're bringing into it. And Living I get, energy, yeah. Energy, I mean, right? And then it's transmuting then, right? Because what we're talking about is, hey, it's not this feeling over here. Let it pass, right? What is it? Matras Parshas Tu Konteya. In the Bhagavad Gita, it talks about the, the happiness and distress that we experience is like the passing of the winter and summer seasons. It'll pass, but you've got to be able to sit with it, embrace it, have that conversation. And like yes. you said, Sometimes it's not as bad as you think at all, but you've just got to learn to yes. feel that frequency 
yes. have some trust in oneself. And that, again, I guess that comes back to connecting with oneself, which is what yoga is doing, right? It's helping us to connect back with ourselves yes. and our source. Is that how you see it? Totally. I mean, look, I, I think that we all have challenges and it's, we're getting, it's, yoga helps us to get back there. It helps us to remember how beautiful it is to be us right so you can fall in love with yourself again you can be okay with the stuff you know yoga doesn't make you a perfect guru it makes you okay with not being perfect mm. because we're not meant to be perfect right that's otherwise we kind of be born be perfect and job done let's go it's there's a beautiful journey in it and for me yoga is Everybody, you know, oh, so funny. The other day, somebody said to my daughter, she's six. And they went, oh, so Sonia, do you do yoga every day? And she looked and she said, every day, every morning, every night, every afternoon. <laughs> and it was so cute because I have yoga mats all over the house. You know, I have yoga mat next to my bed. If that's not going to happen in the morning, I have a yoga mat downstairs. I mean, yoga will happen in the kitchen if it must. Yoga has to happen because it is in this coming into my body it's not just about that trick and asana. It's not just about that downward dog. It's the moment I go into it. Yes, and then I sip in the breath and I feel it moving through my body. And I, whatever is stuck, whatever needs processing, whatever is blocked, it just gets fresh prana, just whipping through it. And I'm, mm -hmm. I feel alive. It makes me feel alive again. And my moving energy yoga is not this sweaty powerful practice it is a deep stretch opening feeling dropping in knowing that you are moving the energy in your house to clean it out so that your mind can think clearly so that your heart can feel cl clearly it's you're rinsing out right what is stopping you from being you good so uh, on that note Yes. Let's, let's hear a little bit about what your big projects are, because I, it seems like the moving energy brand, the moving energy yoga work that you've been doing for so long is about to become available for people in their own homes in terms of a program that you've developing. I think you referred to it earlier. So tell us a little bit about that. So I wanted to share moving energy yoga with everyone, um, not just people that I could, you know, get to but with everybody so i i created total body healing yoga and that was received incredibly well it's now it's available online so you can use it everywhere but it's also available in chinese if you have any chinese friends um and it's soon going to be available in spanish so i'm very excited about yeah, that yeah. But, but i found that a lot of people will get will you know get total body healing maybe use it once or twice and never use it again and it's kind of sad, you know, for me, I'm like, what can I do to make people do their yoga? Because right. I know that they, it's going to change their lives. It's mm. going to transform the, the way that they feel, the way that they interact with their own children. Their children will see them doing it and will want to practice yoga. Now, what better gift to give to your kids, right? Right from the beginning, like show them that mom and dad are yogis, you know, and I realized that it's the preparation. It's very hard to start a practice or, or any habit. It's like saying, you know, I want to go on diet and then you don't clean out the pantry and you leave all the chocolate and candy and sugar in there. You can't do it. Like Perfect. you're asking yourself to white knuckle it. And I'm sorry, it's just the hardest thing. There may be one or two of us that can do it, but for the most part, we have to prepare right? We have to go and clean the pantry out, get rid of the sugar. We have to clean our homes and prepare. I am turning a leaf. You literally tell the universe, I am turning a leaf. I am about to go on the biggest journey of my life. And I am going to prepare this, prepare for this. I'm going to answer because there's, there's a long questionnaire. And it's interesting, the questions that I ask in this program, help people to really hone in on why it is they want to start, why yoga at home, 
Mm-hmm. And also, what are their deeper beliefs about yogis and a yoga practice? So I'm getting interesting answers. You know, I, I, one of the questions is, what is your idea of a yogi? And I had one lady say, my idea of a yogi is somebody who wears, you know, tight leggings and walks around Whole Foods with a chai latte and he's very snobby. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, that's hilarious because when 16 years ago, my idea of a yogi was that they don't shave, they grow their hair under their armpits, they have dreadlocks and any spare food they keep for the compost heap. So they're kind of stinky. (laughs) I mean, if you look at our ideas of what we think of, you know, what is a yogi, but the questions help people to get so clear what do I think of this? What do I want? What is what has stopped me if I've tried before? Um, and and you know what? Why do I want this so much right now in my life? Right. Am I ready? Is the soil for the seed ready? And once you've got that down and you've answered these questions, you've done your tidy up. You you feel like your home is ready for this transformational practice. Then you begin, and it is beautiful because you've told the universe. I'm ready. Mm. Bring it. Right. And that's what, that's why I created the seven step program because it's so important. Okay. And the seven day, the seven step program for bringing yoga home is obviously going to come. We will, we will share details of that um, as it's appropriate, but also rumor has it Sonia that a podcast of your own, is in the wings. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this podcast is, um, it's a hypnobirthing podcast. Um, I, when I had my daughter um, six years ago, I had already been teaching yoga for 10 years. I was, you know, um, I was pretty organic in my thinking, but I was petrified of childbirth. I mean, properly petrified and there's actually a word for it this deep set fear like a phobia Mm. and i i didn't know how i was going to get through it i then decided that my my course would be to go to hypnobirthing to do yoga every single day so that i prepared my body and to study everything i knew and i i we had a midwife come and help me and by the time she came to us I knew so much about the anatomy and physiology of the body and childbirth. And she was like, are you, you studying to be a midwife? I was like, Oh no, 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 no. It's just so important to me to have every bit of information. Well, even after all of that, even after all the work, even after all the hypnobirthing, all the meditations, everything, I still wasn't sure how this birth was going to go. Of course, because I hadn't had the baby. Well, the day that Nika, I went into labor, it it literally was, you know, we lived in St. John's Wood, um, minutes away from Regent's Park. It was the most beautiful Sunday. The sun was coming up and I woke up and I was like, oh my God, it's happening. But I still, I kept on thinking to myself, just be peaceful, sit on the sofa you know, in Sadasana, cross-legged, hands up, and just wait. Wait for when you're going to need your energy for that real hard stuff. Well, the hard stuff never came. And by the time we arrived, I didn't even know I was meant to go to hospital, but the midwife said, I think we should make a move. By the time we arrived, she was born in 14 minutes. And it was like, I mean, those 14 minutes were the most... I, it's so, it's so incredible for me to say this because I'd already been on a yoga track. I'd had some incredible experiences, epiphanies and moments that were like awakening and enlightening. But the moment that I had her, it was the most spiritual moment of my entire life. It was this moment where everything just made sense. Like I got what what we're all doing like what are we like this whole here we are you know all dressed up and yet we are these primal incredible beings procreating on this amazing planet it was so special well 
when I, after her birth, I got up and I was, I, I walked, there's like a little, um, she was born at UCH hospital. So many of your audience in London will know it. And there was like a little tea room around the back. I was so excited. I couldn't sit down. I, I could have gone to a party and I walked down the hall and I, I went to go and make my own tea. And this uh, midwife said, Oh, were you with the lady in room six? And I was like, I, I was in room six. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> it was amazing. And I said to my husband, I was like, I could, I could have babies for other people. This was so amazing. Okay. Um, and after that, I decided I, I called Catherine Graves. For, it was her, uh, Catherine Graves hypnobirthing. And I was like, this, this, I need to share. So I studied to share it. And I went to, obviously, I'd never taught prenatal yoga before. I loved it and I loved seeing these lovely belly bumps coming to yoga, but it never felt authentic to me because I hadn't done it. I hadn't been pregnant and I hadn't experienced it. But when I was pregnant, I did, I did a course, you know, obviously specifically in prenatal yoga. And I thought, how perfect. I'll be my own guinea pig. Mm. When they say do this, I'll know because I'll be the litmus test. And so it was amazing. And a lot of the prenatal yoga that I learned was very boring sorry to say it but I was like I'm sorry I can do way more than this and I would go home and I would do moving energy yoga and it was amazing and so that is what I want to share in my podcast because I get I get so excited to share with pregnant women especially when they tell me I'm so scared I'm like whoa that was me let's talk I love it so much right so my podcast is about all the new science that is coming up. There's a lot of research and it's happening all the time. New research, new trends, new information for birthing moms and dads. And, and it's just amazing. But one of the things that people never talk about is taking that hypnobirthing that you've learned. Okay. Cause I love hypnosis. I love the mind. I love the power of the mind, taking that hypnosis into your parenting. So mm. when you are, you know, your baby, then she's one, two, there is a lot that you have to journey with your child as a parent. But the art of hypnosis is available to all of us, self-hypnosis. Right. And I want to talk about how we take that into the first stages, the fourth trimester, how we take that ability to self-hypnotize into bringing peace, stillness, self-belief into ourselves about everything involved in parenting. So that is the podcast, the oh. hypno, yeah, the hypno yoga mama show. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. So Sonia, yeah. where can we find out more about you? We know, we know that you have a fantastic secret. It's not a secret. It's the secret bliss on YouTube. <laughs> um, That's amazing. What are the, so, where are the places we can find out more? And, yes, okay. So the secret list I started a very long time ago. I, I'm, you know, I have to say my apologies to a lot of um, people out there because I, I, I get inundated with emails going, when are you going to post? When are you going to post? Why haven't you posted anything? And I'm sure you have, you know what that's like. I, it's just, I'm so engrossed in this seven steps, my, you know, uh, starting a podcast, um, sharing, you know, total body healing in so many different languages that I'm trying to do. So much is going on in my life. And also primarily, I can't tell you, but being a mom is like the leading role, right? Mm -hmm. So I will start to share mm -hmm. more on the secret lists. I will. And, um, and yes, but you can find so many videos there. You can find videos on topics of, you know, emotional release, hamstrings. You can even see videos there on my ayahuasca journeys. Okay. Um, you know, some, I, there's a lovely interview there with Anna, Anna Hunt, and she is, uh, you know, ayahuasca in London. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can check out interviews there. But yeah, for anybody watching this, I, I promise I will upload more to The Secret Place. But you can find Good. me there. Good. And the seven steps for bringing yoga home is available soon. So, so it's going to be available in a Teachables course. Yay. And you can literally do 
the course on your own. You can do it in your own time. So once you finish step one and you've done all the questions, you shift to step two. And I love to hear about people's progress and journeys. So I want you to email me and tell me how this amazing transformational journey is happening for you. Um, and right now it is available one-to-one. -one. So people, you mm -hmm. can actually do this course, seven steps with me, one-to-one -one until Teachables comes out. But I am pretty busy. So it has to, you, you know, if this is something that's interesting to you and you've really decided that this is what you want, um, then you can email me, yoga at sonyadubel.com. Love that. Sonia, it has been a joy to hear your journey. I'm kind of beaming because you're so real with what you bring. You're so authentic and you live and breathe the yoga. What in Sanskrit they refer to as the acharyas. Acharyas and those acharyas means those who are walking their talk, those who are living by their own example. And you are therefore an acharya. An acharya... Aww beautiful practice of yoga i can just visualize that little sonia is going to be you know following in mom's footsteps in her own unique way bringing something yeah. to the table and folks for those of you who've stayed with us on this magnificent and insightful episode thank you so much for being with us we're going to no doubt hear from sonia and give you the opportunity to connect with sonia in the different ways and stay tuned for more episodes Watch out for what we've got coming. Hey, folks, thanks so much for listening. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. And as with all our episodes, found something to inform, inspire, and empower you in your personal and spiritual journeys in life. As always, feel free to leave a little love for your ratings and comments. Subscribe and share it with those you care about. And take your personal and spiritual evolution to the next level by joining us on one of our unique events, workshops, or retreats, or taking advantage of our personal and professional coaching packages. Find out more about us at mantratherapy.co.uk. I'm your host, Prash K. This is Urban Spirituality, and we will catch you on the next episode.